Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Gemstone Legends video. And in this video, I want to talk about Capre, probably my favorite astral hero at the moment. So I want to go through the build, uh, why I made the decisions I did, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll go into the arena and do some raids, uh, kind of showcasing what he can do. So as far as what I'm capable of, this is probably the most ideal build I could manage. It's possible some things could be tweaked a tiny bit, um, but this is quite strong for me and something I'm very happy with. I did have to take gear off of other heroes just because of how good those pieces were and how hard it can be to come by like truly elite level pieces of equipment. Uh, so that's the case at the moment. Um, yeah, so let's look at it. Let's start with special abilities. I've got him all maxed up on tomes. Inflicts stun on a single enemy for three turns. So from what I understand, that is a guaranteed stun. Unless they have immunity or something because there's no percentage tied to it. It's just he inflicts stun and that's that. Deals damage based on 150% of caster's defense to a single enemy three times. So if you've watched the channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of these heroes that deal damage based on defense because it gives them survivability at the same time as dealing damage, which is far uh, stronger in many cases than heroes that deal damage based on attack who are built like glass cannons. This guy is built very tanky, and he deals more damage as a result of it. Tile damage suffers a bit because his attack stat is lower, but as you can see, or will see, his attack stat is quite high still. Uh, considering he's a defense-based hitter. Lastly, ignores 40% defense. And then the passive deals 15% more damage to enemies affected by stun. So follow-up hits on uh, targets that he's already hit are going to be stronger. Excellent. He ignores taunt and provoke, so he can attack who he wants to. There does seem to be a bug with this at the moment that I'll mention because... When it's his turn, he can click on whoever you can click on whoever you want to click on, regardless of taunt being active. But if he's fully charged on another's here on another hero's turn, you can't click on anyone but taunt. It says you must select the uh, the hero affected by taunt or something like that. So that does impact his uh, usability. I think that will probably get fixed at some point. I have to imagine that's unintentional, just because he's adding a new mechanic to the game. One of the best things about him can match gemstones one additional time. With four matches, you can pretty much guarantee that you can charge him every time it's his turn and before it's his turn because he's gaining mana from all colors. Mana gain decreased by only 40% instead of 60%, so he's roughly 33% uh, faster than he would have been in terms of charging. All right, so for build, based on what we've seen, you don't need to worry about accuracy. You want to go for defense, crit rate, and crit damage. So I think the Astral Heroes only need 100% crit rate because they have no color affinity um, or the opposite, where they have a the opposite of an affinity. Um, so I got that up to 101, which is as close as I could get. Had to sacrifice a tiny bit of crit damage to get there. I think I was at... 245 or something like that before but crit rate was just under and it was missing a little bit more than i wanted so i had to swap those around defense is quite high you could build defense higher but from what i learned early in the game um which i assume this is still true if you know differently uh please correct me but crit damage is more valuable than building defense stat higher so i could probably come down to 5,000 on defense if it meant i could push crit damage higher I'll have to investigate that. I'm not sure if it's possible, but crit damage, you get more exponential gains, whereas the increasing the you know attack stat or the defense stat, whatever their attack is based off of, is a little bit more of a linear gain, uh, if that makes sense. So in terms of relic, we've got the Blade of Agony on here. Increases speed by five, which is great because uh, he's actually pretty speedy for an, for an attacker. Increases mana gain by 1. For every 10% HP lost, 
increases damage dealt by 4% with a max up to 30. Um, if an enemy dies from the hero's special ability, it deals 15,000 true damage to another random enemy. So pretty awesome. There's other things you could use on there, but that seems to be a popular one, and that's what I'm enjoying at the moment. And then in terms... I was going to say in terms of the build, but look at the speed first. 298. He's got a base speed of 259, which is very, very fast for a base speed. That's more than 50 higher than a typical base speed is. So that's pretty excellent. Um, all right. So for equipment, defense boots, um, this is an opportunity for improvement if we were able to perfect things. The role that went into accuracy, which is not needed, could have gone into crit damage. The role that went into speed could have also gone into crit damage, but I don't mind having a little more speed on him. So I'm using these because they're in a very good set bonus for him. We're getting plus 40% crit damage for this set, which is really fantastic. Um, that's pushing him over 200 by a significant amount. All right, this armor has room for improvement as well because it's not a six-star piece, so the defense is a little bit lower than it needs to be. It's also not tied to a set. Um, so typically with attackers, I try to run one good set if I can, but it's better to prioritize better equipment than it is to try to force a set that you don't have the right pieces for. Um all right, so 50% there. Crit damage going up again, a little bit of HP, a wasted roll into attack, but again, we're talking about perfection at that point, and some crit rate. So it's possible that I could find a six-star defense piece that has, you know, nine or 10% crit rate, both would be fine, and uh, a bit more crit damage here, since there's nothing else that's really helping us. The little bit of HP is not bad, but it's not too significant. All right, these are pretty incredible. Again, still a wasted roll into defense, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. That's the way it goes typically, in fact. 70% crit damage gloves, 19% crit rate on there, a little bit of unneeded accuracy. So um, again, this is not a perfect build, but I would say it's a very strong build and it functions well. All right, big crit rate piece here, 26% with additional crit damage, which is good, a little more HP for survivability. Um, theoretically, you could substitute all this HP with defense, and you would be improving the build a bit, but you would also be losing, losing some survivability. So it's very, very hard to have what I would consider a perfect build, but this is approaching that. All right, helmet. We've got another big crit rate piece. These are what are helping us get to that... Um, 100% threshold that we need. Those are two big pieces, so you're going to need something like that if you're going for a similar goal. There is the Hawkeye set. Um, however, if you're forcing bad pieces to get that, you're better off going a different route. So um, we've got a little more crit damage there, a little more speed there, which is not bad. It helps boost them up a bit. And then 10% crit rate here with 17% more crit damage and a little boost to attack. So if we look at his attack, 3142, it's not bad. Um, that's going to help out with the gemstone attacks. Um, so yeah, that's the build overall. Uh, you can see fully awakened from the awakening. Uh, he's getting increased defense, which is the perfect thing. Uh, crit damage could have been good too, but... Um, yeah, man, if he had another, what, like, I forget how much you get from Awakening, 40% <laughs> crit damage. That would be insane. Um, all right, so let's jump into some raids here, and I can show you what he looks like in action. I think in a lot of people's opinion, he is the best legendary astral hero. Not far and away. There are some fantastic legendary and epic astral heroes. They're all playable. Um, but I think he is one of the better ones. He's the the first one I got and uh, very happy to have gotten him. So let's jump into some raids in the arena and let me show you what he looks like. All right, so I'm decently high in the arena right now. Uh, I feel like top 100 is a great place to be. So let's get a fresh roll here and see what we want to attack. 
Um, is she spell shield or immunity spell shield? Let's go here first. I gotta be careful with this team with the Rosalius because they all have the Gauntlet of Thorns on them. Ignores 24% defense on top of her 20. So that's like, you know, approaching 50%. The math is not challenging, but <laughs> the point I was trying to make is it's getting close to 50%, which is crazy high. And then damage is increased for every 650 defense she has. So she can one-shot Zarkon. Um, so I have to get Kalem fired up before that. And also she's got the passive chance to, uh, when taking damage, deal damage back, which means Capri hitting her can also one-shot Zarkon. Alrighty, let's go. So I have a pretty speedy team, but that's a very fast Strybog to beat me to the punch. Um, and then the main person, aside from Rosalia, that we need to worry about is Necros. That guy is quite dangerous. Alright. Uh, not going to get Zarkon charged, but let's... Pull some yellows out of circulation. Not good enough. Okay, so... We've got Kalem just about charged. Fortunately, it's our turn again. So... Let's go for Kalem. It should charge everybody else. They have Spell Shield. Uh... They got a lot of shit on them. Alright, so let's go here. Away at that spell shield, see if we can get anything to stick, and we can't, so I'll probably be going for Rosalia first. It's gonna be hard to deal much damage because she has a uh, high defense as part of her build, and then we just want to make the best moves we can for charging as quickly as possible. Another shot at her. Boost our mana up again. Taunt is going to last. I guess we'll throw some attack up elsewhere. Reset the taunt. Heal up a little bit. And hope for some more hope. Not enough. Alright. So Necros is going next. He is not going to char... Well... I don't think he's going to charge, but we don't want to give him any extra help, so let's, okay. Oh shit, okay, that wasn't too bad. Alright, he's charged up after his turn. Okay, now we can start to make some progress here, so let's throw down Zarkon. Where can we get some... Decreased defense, not on Rosalia, unfortunately. But we should be able to fire him right away. So let's just make sure we can. Alright. Boom, she's down. Necros. Ready to go again. Alright, so there's a better hit, and that's why I've been using the uh, team composition I'm using. Because I tested him out early, and I was like, man, for as crazy as his stats are, he should really be hitting harder. Um, but he wasn't, so I thought, alright, well I guess the solution is to pair him with some sort of defense down hero that can help amplify his damage. And that has been a good solution. Um... Zarkon is still a great hero. He's fallen a bit from... Wow, that is a weak Necros. Um, he's fallen a bit from his previous position of being, like, one of the most incredible heroes you could have. 
uh, to being just a great hero. Alright, I guess we'll get a kill here. There's that 15k from the Blades of Agony. Um, so I think Raven... What's her name, right? I think Raven's going to fire first, so we should eat up the heal before Sigil is able to cleanse that. Um, Alright, but yeah, Zarkon has that great speed. And uh, the de de defense down in addition to just being able to stack up a bunch of poison damage. Alright, maybe I'll speed this up to get to the end here so that we can jump into another battle and not take too long wrapping up a battle that has clearly been won. Here's another team, another day, another Rosalia. Let's go for it. All right, so I really want to get Zarkon charged on the first turn. Let's see how much we can actually get to stick or not. Keep working those combos, trying to get the astral heroes charged up. It's one thing about using these heroes is they um, they really give you some practice with regards to how to manipulate the board as best you can. All right, so we've got a reviver here with defense down, so let's give him a good smack. Probably should have stopped. Ah, uh, we're just short. Probably should have stopped um, Halika instead. There's no one to revive at the moment. So I think I made a bit of a bad choice there. Because she's just going to bring him right back to full health, just about, and give him immunity. Okay, so not ready to fire Kalem yet. Let's get some defense down. Going if we can. Rosalia, the perfect recipient. So you can see the... Oh, I didn't have Taunt active. Shoot. Thought I did. Um, so that'll be enough. You can see that his damage is not crazy. Let me know your thoughts on that because... I personally expected uh, more damage from the kind of build that you saw. That's a, a pretty elite build, and the damage is, is low, in my opinion, considering that. There's a lot of good things about him, however, such as the fact that he um, has great speed, um, can match four times, so he's firing a lot more often. There's some significant advantages that he has over Rosalia. However, Rosalia does have higher damage, which is not what you would necessarily expect, given that she is a four star and he is a legendary astral. All right, well, once again, the battle is won, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up, and we'll jump on to the next.
All right, so let's go for another one. This looks like an especially nasty team. I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm certainly not building my team around excelling against this team. We're just going to go in with this and see how we do. Um, but this is going to be quite a battle, so we will see what happens. I expect to be beaten on speed. Okay, not quite. Uh, hmm, damn. I want to get the four purples going right away. However, it's important to make as many matches early as I can. Let's do it like that. All right, no combos, but we're doing pretty good. Wow, look how fast those Astros are charging. Should have done more blues, but... Alright, they've got a big turn coming up, so we need to make sure we get Taunt going. Freaking Capre on their team has got a huge protective bubble on himself. So I think Virgo might be our target here. She does not... Oops, I should not have done that that way. She does not have a turn coming up, though, so perhaps that was not the best approach. Nefri was probably the right approach just to try to um, get that revive out of commission early, but let's see what happens. This is where it gets... Oh, ignores Todd. Forgot about that. Yikes. Can we even survive their turn here? Okay, Capra is not charged. It's his turn though, so it's going to be... A oh. Wow, this is a sight to behold. Oh, Jesus. Holy shit. What the fuck? Damn, I was all clogged up. I can't even use Strybog. Whew. I don't anticipate winning this. Look at three of them with that protective bubble and I got no defense down. So yeah, there's no way in hell I'm winning this. Holy shit. God damn, what did she give? 70%? 100%. Cause she's maxed. Well, three legendary astrals maxed is pretty wild. What kind of relics do we have on here? Murderous Frenzy. Immortal. Wow, this is a S tier team. Yeah, holy shit. Okay, well, we got our asses kicked. Um, anyway. Heal block. <laughs> I'm just going to bow out of this one, but um, hopefully that gives you a good idea of this particular hero, um, both on offense and defense. We saw him whoop my ass on defense too, especially in the company that he was in. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any other comments on this hero, any questions, and hopefully this gave you some ideas for how to build and uh, what you can expect. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.